Hey there, what's going on? I'm Andy Sterkowitz, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about my three biggest regrets from the time I was learning to code. Like many of you guys out there who are learning right now, you are just piecing things together, you're trying to figure this out on your own, and there's a lot of mistakes that you're making that are gonna end up making you waste a lot of time. And similar to you guys, I went through that same experience. So I wanted to provide you guys with my three biggest regrets so you don't have to waste as much time as I did. Now, if you're new here and you're wondering who I am, I'm Andy Sterkowitz. I'm a self-taught programmer, but I'm also a mentor and coach to everyday people who are looking to transition into a career as a programmer. So I really focus this channel on things that are related to learning how to code, obviously, how to land your first job. So I highly recommend, if you're interested in content like that, hitting the subscribe button below so you can get notifications anytime I put out a new video. Now with all of that being said, let's just get right into the three biggest regrets that I've ever had. All right, so my number one biggest regret when it came to learning to code was that I used to focus a lot of my attention on the quantity of hours that I used to study versus actually focusing on the quality. So this really came from the hustle mentality, right? The grind and hustle, like the Gary Vaynerchuk mentality where it's like you just grind and hustle for as many hours as you can a week and that's the way to success, right? And that's a pretty good starter for if you wanna be better at anything is that you wanna spend time doing it, right? And so I figured like, look, Everybody out there, they're studying like 10 or 15 or 20 hours a week and I'm gonna blow that out of the water. I'm gonna do it 50 or 60 hours a week. And that was great and I made progress, but unfortunately looking back on it, the progress was actually stunted in a lot of ways and I'll tell you why. Because instead of focusing on the quality of time, right? Like distraction-free time, really making sure that I'm comprehending the material and I'm using it, I would just st instead focus. My metric was I'm just gonna sit in front of the computer and code, code, code. And you know what really happens when you do that? You know what truly happens is that there's a drop-off point. I don't know if it's at 30 or 40 hours a week, but at some point you just can't, you don't have enough energy to, to muster to truly get those high quality hours of work in that you're really gonna be focused or distracted free. What typically happens at a certain point is you start, your willpower starts crumbling. And instead of actually studying, what you're doing is you're checking your email, you're checking your Facebook account, you're checking your phone, like who's texting me, right? And you get drawn away. And all of a sudden you in your mind think you're studying for 50 or 60 hours a week, but really true quality time is maybe lower in, in the range of like 20 or 30 hours. So instead of trying to get 80 hours a week of study time in or something crazy that people tell me, they tell me like, oh, I'd study 100 hours a week, which they really don't, if they're being honest, and that's fine, I get it, I, I, I was there myself, is to focus on the quality. And that means number one is distraction-free time. Like in other words, when you sit down to study, this should not be around. This should be in airplane mode. This should be on do not disturb mode, like whatever it is. You shouldn't be checking emails. So there should be some sort of application blocking service that you can download for your computer where you're not being distracted constantly. You shouldn't like be watching YouTube. You shouldn't be listening to podcasts. You shouldn't be reading Kindle books while you're coding. I know it sounds crazy, but I know people do it. I know for a fact. You really need to get yourself really comfortable with being in a set uh, or in a state of deep focus. That's where you make the most breakthroughs. That's where you're most intelligent. And in this day and age, it's really hard to do. We are completely overwhelmed with distractions. But the person who can figure out their way and navigate around distractions, that's the type of person who can learn a lot quickly. And that's the person who can put in 20 or 30 hours a week, or even maybe 15 hours per week of focused, truly focused time, and they can make those that same progress as somebody who's grinding away at 50 hours a week. So my biggest regret is really focusing on quantity. So don't focus so much on quantity and, and saying it's all about quantity. You have to be, I would say, at least studying 15 hours per week, which I have a video I'll post here that is all about how many hours you should study per week. But remember that the quality of time is just as important. And if you're not getting good quality time, then the rest doesn't matter. My second biggest regret when it came to learning to code was waiting too long to dive into projects. My personality, the way I like to learn is I like to learn things in depth, right? I wanna go advanced. I wanna go really, really deep into things. And so when it came to learning JavaScript and HTML, I wanna know everything there was to know. I wanna know the ins and outs. And so I went through the head first HTML and JavaScript books. I wait till I finished the last last book at the last page of the last book, and then I finally started diving into uh, a Tetris game, which by the way is super challenging. I don't know why I chose that, but I did. And what I found, at least looking back on it now, is I could have started way earlier. I could have started with some smaller projects, maybe some to-do apps, your typical like smaller projects, and built up some momentum before I got into the Tetris, which would have helped me massively. It would have helped me cut down the learning curve a lot. And so instead of spending all that time waiting till I was ready to go until I learned all the concepts, 
uh, I could have started. And that really held me back because I constantly waited until I was done with some tutorial or done with some book when I could have just started learning. And you typically find this a lot with people who are saying like, you know, I'm waiting. I'm just waiting until I, I learn this. Or they keep saying they know a lot about a programming language, but they haven't actually applied it. And they find that when you ask them about their portfolio, they say, Oh yeah, I don't have any apps in my portfolio. I have some ideas, but I don't quite know how to apply it. And the thing is, if you've even learned just a few things about a programming language or HTML or CSS, you should be applying it. You shouldn't just know it up here. I wanna see what you can do with it. And so I have, as a mentor, I have people start way early before they even know some of the basic concepts of programming language and they find that they're actually quicker at picking things up because they're applying it to an actual project. You still need to go deep into concepts. You still need to learn concepts, but really what I would say is for you guys who are waiting for that right moment to actually start building a project, now is a good time. And you can always adapt your strategies. So if you find that you're, you know, you need to step back and maybe do a little more passive learning, like focus on tutorials or something like that, there's always a good time to do it, but don't wait too long. Don't do what I did, like get started as soon as possible. And my third biggest regret, as far as it comes to learning to code, was that I never found a community of like-minded people who were looking to do the same thing I was doing, which was obviously teaching themselves the code and, and getting their first job. And the reason that it's so important to have a community, and the reason I think it would have benefited me so much, because number one, the accountability factor. Like you need to be held accountable by somebody else. It's so hard to learn to code in my opinion. Like even, look, I've been successful doing it, but it was a lot of struggle. Like it's hard to show up every single day and, and hit your study hours. And when things get tough, when they when you're struggling to learn and there's something not working, you need to have that outside accountability. It works with you know losing weight. Anytime you know that there's somebody else who's who's expecting you to do something, you're more likely to do it. Even beyond that, just the spread of information. So there's so much information out there, and it's hard to really know what is worth your time. And it's hard to even get all the information. You could spend all your hours just Googling it every day or watching tutorials, and you still might miss a lot of stuff. Whereas when there are people who are taking this serious and they're also out there trying to find more information, a lot of times what happens is they find some good information and they share it with you and, and vice versa. And it becomes a very, like you, you find that a lot of high quality information is transmitted. So just the accountability and the fact that information spreads a lot better are the two biggest reasons that I find it. And look, I couldn't find a good community, to be totally honest with you. I'm not big on some of the big communities out there. Reddit's not never really been my thing. Uh, there's other communities and I found that the bigger the community tended to be, the more that there was just a lot of people who were messing around, hobbyists, they weren't taking this serious. Whereas for myself, I really wanted to take this serious. And so finding that community of people uh, who are serious, who are like you, who you can share information with, who are gonna cheer you on, that's what you really wanna find here. Even if it's one other person, that's still, I would still consider that a community because if there's one other person out there who you know is at your level in terms of where they're at, whether you're just starting out or whether they're at your same level of commitment, meaning they're really serious about this, they're not messing around and you know that they're gonna be sticking around if you stick around. That could even be helpful. If you can find a group of three or four men, that's a, a pretty strong group. You can really find a lot of motivation from that. So for me, I really wish I had found a community of people. I, I have felt like if I had just had the impetus to go out there and meet more people, maybe even go to a meetup occasionally and just introduce myself to some people. I could have met others. I could have found some people who were serious and used that as an accountability tool and a way to get more information. But either way, like, you know, if you can find a community, it's going to help you really hold yourself accountable and make progress at a much faster rate. All right, guys, so those are my three biggest regrets when it came to learning to code. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Now, if you are looking for a community of people, I actually do have a Facebook group for people who really like my content, who want more than just what I put on YouTube. So I will leave a link in the description below if you wanna join that group. Again, I share high quality content there. So occasionally I do live Q and A events, but highly recommend joining that group when you get a chance. Other than that guys, thank you so much for watching and as always, peace out.